Hi, curious minds and nature enthusiasts. Today, we're diving head first into the wild world of fire ants, those tiny terrors that have turned our habitat into their own personal playground. Buckle up, because we're not just exploring the usual ant antics, we're delving into the intriguing facts that make fire ants the tiny titans of the insect realm. Fire ants may be small, but don't let their size fool you. They've got a bag of tricks and a few stingers up their six little sleeves. From accidental voyages with mysterious origins to painful stings that pack a punch, these ants are more than just a picnic nuisance. And just when you thought you had them all figured out, we're throwing in a bonus fact about their royal ruler. So, grab your magnifying glass and get ready to uncover the buzzworthy secrets of fire ants, it's time to venture into the miniature marvels of the ant kingdom. Let's start our journey into the fascinating world of fire ants by delving into their scientific and common names. Meet Solenopsis and Victor Buren and S. Rictae Fall, the dynamic duo commonly known as imported fire ants. These little critters didn't exactly buy a plane ticket to North America, they hitched a ride, probably around a century ago. While you might casually call them fire ants, their scientific and common names provide a glimpse into their origin and characteristics. The scientific names Solenopsis and Victor and S. Rictae are not just tongue twisters, they actually reveal crucial information. Solenopsis translates to smooth appearance, highlighting the ant's sleek bodies, while Envicta means undefeated, a fitting title for these resilient invaders. On the other hand, Rictae pays homage to August Henry Fall, a Swiss myrmecologist who specialized in the study of ants. These names go beyond mere labels, they narrate a story of accidental migration and adaptation in a new land. Fire ants may be small, but their impact is anything but. These tiny terrors come in two main colors, black and red. While the black ones might blend into the background, it's the red fire ants that catch your eye, thanks to their reddish-brown or rusty appearance. Sizing up from 1 8 to 3 8 of an inch, fire ants are the giants among common ant species in North America. Picture this, a bustling colony of fire ants with segmented bodies, six legs, and antennae on their heads. Their distinctive appearance sets them apart from the ant crowd. The reddish way is like a warning sign, signaling their fiery nature. As they navigate their environments, these ants become a living tapestry of black and red, a testament to their adaptability and survival skills. But it's not just about looks. The size and color of fire ants play a crucial role in their ecological interactions. From foraging for food to defending their nests, these characteristics contribute to the intricate dance of survival in the ant world. So, the next time you spot a red fire ant, marvel at its size and color, a small creature with a big presence in the ecosystem. Now that we've explored the aesthetics of fire ants, let's embark on a journey to discover where these creatures have chosen to set up their miniature civilizations. Fire ants have carved out a prominent niche in the southern regions of the United States, creating a map that spans from Maryland to Texas and California to New Mexico. It's in these warmer climates that fire ants truly thrive, explaining their prevalence in these specific areas. Though South American in origin, the red imported fire ant has been accidentally introduced in Australia, New Zealand, several Asian and Caribbean countries, Europe and the United States. In India, they are found in some remote areas of Madhya Pradesh and Kerala. The warm temperatures and suitable habitats create the perfect conditions for these ants to establish their colonies and go about their ant business. But it's not just about the heat. Fire ants are adaptable creatures that have managed to infiltrate various ecosystems, from grasslands to urban landscapes. Fire ants, famed for their fiery sting, inhabit large underground colonies vulnerable to flooding during rains. To counter this, when waters rise, masses of worker and soldier ants escort their queen and larvae to the surface. There, they form a buoyant raft, locking legs to create a structure upheld by water tension. Covered in fine hairs that trap air, they remain afloat for weeks, with as many as 100,000 ants in this makeshift vessel. The queen and larvae find sanctuary at the raft's dry center, shielded by the surrounding ants. 
Scientists are intrigued by the ant's innate ability to form this living fabric without apparent leadership. Upon reaching a safe spot, they disband, carrying their young and queen to safety. Remarkably, the floods become an opportunity for these resilient ants, facilitating exploration of new feeding grounds. Once waters recede, they establish a new subterranean home, turning adversity into advantage. Now that we've traced the journey of fire ants to their adopted home, let's shift our focus to the impressive structures they call home, their mounds. These mounds, easily recognizable due to their size, are a distinctive feature of the fire ants habitat. Stepping into one of these mounds is not just a casual inconvenience, it's an instant realization that you've crossed into fire ant territory. Fire ant mounds are more than just ant real estate, they're architectural marvels. Ranging between 2 and 4 square feet, these mounds are irregularly shaped, standing as testaments to the industrious nature of these tiny architects. What lies beneath the surface is just as intriguing, a network of tunnels that extends into the depths of the ground. These mounds aren't picky about their locations. You can find them near buildings, construction sites, and various other structures. While fire ants are primarily outdoor enthusiasts, they are not averse to invading houses, which can become a significant issue for unsuspecting homeowners. Imagine this scenario. You unknowingly tread near a fire ant mound, and suddenly, you find yourself in the midst of a swarm of angry ants. Fire ants are notorious for their swift and aggressive response to perceived threats. Disturb their nest, and you'll quickly witness their defensive prowess. These ants aren't the type to engage in diplomacy. If they sense danger, they mobilize their forces with remarkable efficiency. Disturbing a fire ant nest can trigger a coordinated attack, with multiple ants launching simultaneous stings. They won't discriminate, anything that poses a threat, be it a human, animal, or even another insect, becomes a target. Their quick and aggressive nature makes them a formidable force in their ecosystems. While their stinging behavior is a survival strategy, it can pose problems when nests are located near human habitation or workspaces. Fire ants are not confined to defending just their nests, they can also launch attacks beyond their immediate territory if they perceive any threat. When it comes to fire ant stings, these little creatures don't mess around. While their stings aren't usually deadly for most humans, they are renowned for inflicting intense pain. The experience of a fire ant sting is not one easily forgotten, a potent reminder that these seemingly diminutive insects pack a punch. The venom injected by fire ants during a sting causes a range of reactions. Most commonly, the sting site develops a raised welt, accompanied by a burning sensation. The severity of the pain can vary from person to person, with some individuals experiencing more intense discomfort than others. While the majority of people may only suffer temporary discomfort, it's crucial to note that in rare cases, individuals can have allergic reactions to fire ant venom, potentially leading to more serious consequences. It's not just humans who fall victim to these painful stings. Young animals, particularly newborns, are more susceptible to the venom's effects. The pain from a fire ant sting serves as a deterrent, warning potential threats that these ants mean business when it comes to defending their nests and territory. In the intricate hierarchy of fire ant colonies, there exists a monarch ruling over all, the queen. Unlike the workers you see scurrying about, the queen is a reproductive powerhouse, with a singular purpose, laying eggs. In a thriving fire ant colony, the queen takes center stage, and her reproductive prowess is awe-inspiring. The queen's primary duty is to ensure the survival and expansion of the colony. Capable of laying thousands of eggs each day, she plays a pivotal role in the colony's growth and sustainability. Remarkably, the queen's lifespan far surpasses that of her worker subjects, sometimes reaching several years. But here's the intriguing twist. Fire ant colonies can have multiple queens. This cooperative approach to reproduction contributes to the colony's resilience and adaptability. It's a royal collaboration that ensures the ongoing success of the fire ant colony. So, you've unwittingly become the target of a fire ant attack, what now? Fear not, as there are steps you can take to alleviate the pain and discomfort caused by their stings. 
Immediate action is crucial in mitigating the effects. First and foremost, brush off the ants as quickly as possible to prevent additional stings. The venom is the culprit behind the pain, so minimizing the number of stings is a key strategy. Next, wash the affected area with cold water and soap to remove any lingering venom. This not only helps clean the wound but also reduces the risk of infection. For further relief, consider applying oral antihistamines and hydrocortisone cream to the affected area. These medications can help alleviate itching and reduce inflammation. Cold compresses can also be effective in reducing swelling and numbing the pain associated with fire ant stings. Now that we've mastered the art of treating fire ant stings, it's time to arm ourselves with knowledge on how to avoid these painful encounters altogether. Prevention is the name of the game when it comes to dealing with these feisty insects, and a few simple measures can go a long way in keeping those stings at bay. First and foremost, appropriate footwear is your first line of defense. Wearing closed-toe shoes, especially when venturing into areas where fire ants may reside, provides a crucial barrier between your skin and these stinging insects. Steer clear of fire ant nests. These mounds are not just for decoration. They house a battalion of ants ready to defend their turf. Insect repellent is your trusty sidekick in the battle against fire ant stings. Applying a repellent with effectiveness against ants can create an invisible shield, reducing the likelihood of these tiny assailants taking an interest in you. Additionally, opting for long pants and long-sleeved shirts can provide an extra layer of protection, especially when exploring areas with known fire ant activity. But what if fire ant nests have set up camp in your own backyard? In such cases, it might be time to call in the experts. Pest control specialists can assess the situation and implement effective strategies to eliminate fire ant nests, reducing the risk of stings on your property. In conclusion, our journey through the world of fire ants has revealed not just their intriguing habits and characteristics, but also practical tips for coexisting with these tiny invaders. From their accidental introduction to the United States to the painful aftermath of their stings, fire ants are a captivating aspect of the natural world. Understanding their scientific and common names, size and appearance, habitat preferences, and defensive behaviors equips us with the knowledge needed to navigate their territories more safely. While fire ants may not be the most welcome guests, respecting their space and implementing preventive measures allows us to coexist with these invasive pests. So, the next time you spot a fire ant mound or feel that unmistakable sting, remember, knowledge is your greatest ally. Stay curious, stay cautious, and embrace the wild world of fire ants. Until next time, stay wild. And that concludes our showcase of the today's topic. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share this video with your friends, family, and relatives so that they too can enjoy videos on wild animals. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.